Color, how are you? Good. Hi, how are you? I love, love your backdrop. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah, I had to represent today. <laughs> oh, you um, amazing. Sorry, I'm just gonna. I'm hearing that your your image is really far from me. So if I'm ever doing this, it's, that's what I'm up to. All good. Um, first of all, thank you for crafting such an awesome show and an awesome adaptation of these games. Um, as a fan, I, I love this. Uh, it's it's the series that we deserve as fans, and and I just can't thank you guys enough for for bringing this world to life on screen. Um, I can't. We seriously. can't thank you enough that's for saying that. Fine. My goodness, that, that's a lot. <laughs> Gee thank whiz. You. Ab Absolutely. Um, so uh, one of the things that I, I really loved was this is kind of an original story with original characters within this world um, and with a world that exists and stories that exist. I love that you guys went with original characters and original story. Um, can you talk about the process of creating this story and uh, where Lucy, Coop and Maximus came from? Yeah, I mean, um, th the appeal for us was uh, that's what all the Fallout games have done um, is create a new story with new characters. And that, you know, on a crude level, we're like, that must be a sec part of the secret of Fallout, the success of Fallout, is that they keep adding and, and building on it, uh, as opposed to sort of retelling the same story with better graphics or whatever have you. Um, so, yeah, we kind of just took that as our, our cue, is like our job is to do more Fallout, uh, and that's what has worked in Fallout over the years. So, um, yeah, we just did our yeah, best from there. In terms of Lucy and Maximus and the Ghoul, um, you know, we gave a lot of thought to. Uh, well, obviously, we wanted to show the different factions of Fallout because so much of the magic of Fallout is all of these different factions and kind of choosing them within the game, which ones you're going to side with or aid, but also then, um, you know, what does that mean in terms of like which ones we're empathizing with in the show. Uh, and which ones we get the best look at. Uh, and we locked in very early on wanting a Vault Dweller, uh, obviously because so many of the games start with the Vault Dweller leaving the vault, so it was a, an homage to the structure of many of the games, but also um, it gave us a POV character with whom to like learn about the Wasteland for the first time, which we felt was really useful for newcomers who might not be fans yet. Um, and in terms of why we kind of shaped it as Lucy, Maximus, and the Ghoul, um, you know, Graham and I, started talking about the, those three characters extremely early back in 2019 when we first heard Jonah was like getting the rights to Fallout. And it was based on this um, fun little pet theory Graham has about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, it's, it's an incorrect, incorrect theory, for sure. Uh, but they, My theory is totally they, incorrect. That they are, uh, yeah, the whole series is based on a misunderstanding, which is great. Um, we know it's wrong, so hopefully that makes it okay. Sure. It's that there's all the same cowboy, that they've just been up there longer. And you start out as Blondie, oh. you turn into Angel Eyes, and if you go long enough, you're Tuco. And you're sort of, what you experience is like the degradation of your humanity as you go. Um, which I know that's not that's true, because they're in the same so. scenes together. I know. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's like a fun bit of headcanon to build uh, a, a different show out of. It's a really good philosophical point, though, and it's, when you watch the series, you see that moral trajectory, you know, uh, kind of playing out within these with with these characters. It's kind of amazing. Yeah. Um, with a property like this that has such a huge fan base, I mean, when you're adapting it into another medium, what's the highest priority for you guys? Um, I mean, certainly faithfulness, uh, obviously, to the, what what is fundamental about Fallout, right? And of course, we were also. Very, our show takes place in the timeline, right? So we are actually faithful to the timeline itself and the details as much as we, you know, humanly could be. Um, but I think what was most sacred always about, you know, doing an adaptation is fundamentally getting, getting the tone right. Because I think that's what's magical to me about Fallout. Like when I look at, you know, Fallout is one of the greatest video games of all time, but like what makes it specifically special within the pantheon of great games to me is the fact that it combines like weird comedy with this dark post-apocalyptic dramatic action universe and like that mix of, of comedy and drama is really important to us so that was actually kind of the first decision we made was like actually when kilter found out they were getting the rights to the game back in 2019 they called me and were like hey would you be interested in creating an adaptation for us of, of fallout and i immediately talked to graham because like it there was no way to adapt this uh game Without a comedy writer being the you know of the partner and the in the in the creator as well because that's what makes Fallout magical is that it is funny and weird as well as full full of action and drama. 
absolutely the dark comedy lands everything about this is fallout and i that's that's honestly one of the best things that fans can look forward to uh with this show so thank you guys so much for this amazing show for your amazing interview and uh keep it all coming because i love this thank i you. love it so much thank oh, you very so much nice. thank you Take Thank care, guys. Lectures, comments, and the lectures. Fanboys, professional artists, and professors. Maybe a nerd who's just like you. Talking about the things that you like too. So I invite you to the NOC.